Let's get out of the bay. Let's get out of the bay. Jesus, keep them safe. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Every year our adventure begins by heading to Malta, Montana. Hi, Cosmo. We load up our trusty steeds and pack up everything we need to be gone for a week. This isn't a typical vacation. This is a week where we intentionally decide that we are going to go back into time. To a time and place that was much simpler, but also much harder. Excitement is in the air as we prepare camp and get ready for our first day. And whether the horses know what's ahead in their week, they are so excited to have a full plate of food in front of them. These wagons now hold the memories of family time and excitement of adventure. We know they will drive us into the beauty of our world, but hundreds of years ago, they held every hope and dream a family could ever have. We set up camp knowing that we don't have to defend our lives from the wilds of the unknown. No. <laughs> this is Duffy, and it's my ba bear. So you are excited mm -hmm. about food! Is there food. anything else about this wagon train that you're excited about? Hmm. Oh, Riding? Riding? Pet. Pet. Getting on early? This is a new experience for two of our horses. They've never pulled a covered wagon with iron rim wheels before. Okay, let's get out of the bay. Let's get out of the bay. They are unsure of how to handle all the noise and commotion and pulling this wagon for the first time. Jesus, keep them safe. Jesus, keep them safe. That wasn't so bad. <laughs> Whether you or your horses are ready or not, the day begins. What lies ahead? We're all wondering what's in store for the first day. A journey behind a covered wagon in the 21st century brings a lot of reflection and awe of the pioneers who settled the American West. Wasn't. Saddles, seats, and horses all get broken in on that first day of the wagon train. All the horses are challenged as they carry their loads up and down the unforgiving terrain. But as the day wears on, even the newest of teams settle in and get the job done. That water taking the floor. Everyone loves lunchtime. The horses get to rest. We get to stretch our legs and enjoy some family time and, of course, some food.
But lunchtime can't last forever. We must continue on our journey to get to our destination. You're riding. Are you excited? It's quite a journey with 10 to 12 miles a day, but it is beautiful country with lots of blue sky and lots to see. But everyone is glad to get to camp to cool off and settle in for the night. It's okay, he's wrong. <laughs> Cosmo, you're a dork. You're the dorkiest horse I've ever seen. He rode in the mud. In the water, I mean. As quickly as the first day ends, the second one begins. We leave our old camp and set out for the new one. And by day two, we all feel comfortable enough to hand over the reins to the younger generation. And on day two, you step into the saddle a bit more sore than the day before. As the week progresses, the horses do get more sensible, but they also get sore from their long days of pulling a heavy load. At least we don't want to barge in. Yeah. Yeah, wow, well, huh? By noon camp, the horses are ready for a big drink of water, even if it does come from a muddy little pond. Save Jesus, keep them safe, Jesus. Keep them safe, Jesus. Good job, guys. Well, if they find it good to drink, I don't know. Can't be that good, you guys. Let's go across. Afternoon camp on the second day, we do begin to climb in elevation, but it is still a barren and rocky and very dry, desolate area with no rain and grasshoppers wrecking havoc in the area. Whoa. I think they're letting them rest. Whoa. There it is! After a long full day, we all rejoice when we see camp. We're all happy that we've gone and that the day's done. What are these? We're going to put it. Did it get on your foot? Yeah. And it went through? Yes. Oh my goodness. Ouch. So we're putting back the boots on, aren't we? Let me see your feet. Good to go. You got boots on. Yeah. After a long, hot day, even a dip in muddy water feels good. Ready? Set? This is an 
of her one there there you there's very little of it I think that's actually edible I can't get it open you have to pry them open like and then if you get your finger in there <laughs> it'd be cool to find one that's not in there and then have the shell did it you know like bite its I tongue I don't know see because this is all a membrane along here <laughs> that's amazing I think it bit its tongue could have Every morning, we wait in the cool morning sunlight for the crew to get back after moving the vehicles to the next campsite. They all load up in a big trailer and come back and we get started on the day. Thanks, gentlemen. Oh, they even provide seating. That's nice. Bill's team crossed the water for the first time yesterday, but the water crossing on day three will be the real test. Yeah. But they have passed the test and done an excellent job. They don't know probably no. What's on? They don't know. Good job, buddy. That was good. Yeah, it's kind of just Mm -hmm. That was great. He did good. He really did. It was fun, huh? Yes, it is pretty, huh? I bet we have to just go over the mountain. Okay, so imagine that um, uh, a mile is split up into four pieces, like a dollar. The many miles on horseback make for great conversations, math problems, and enjoying all the sagebrush and trees along the river. By day three, we're all settling into the routine of the long days under the hot sun. As I looked back across the prairie, I often wondered what the settlers thought as they left their home behind and moved forward into an unknown future, an unknown location and destination. What was on their hearts and what was on their minds? And what more kept them going but the hope that there was better and sweeter days ahead. did happen on the way west, how many busted up horses and busted up wagons and busted up people happened that stopped journeys from moving forward. But so many kept going despite the hardships and despite all that happened, no matter how hard it got, they kept moving forward for the future of their family and the future of this beautiful land.
Bill's team is proving to be a good team. They work well together and dig in deep on the steep hills, and now they're willing to step into deep and unknown waters. What else could make a better team than one that puts their whole heart into every pull they make? Does it act like you're pushing back there, but you're not really, or something like On day four, we head back across the river for the final day's trek to camp. By this point, horses are sore and tired, and sometimes they can act out in ways that they don't even know why. But with a good, strong, and steady hand helping them, they can make it through and keep going. These boys are full brothers, and one of them is a four-year-old, and one of them is a three-year-old. The landscape changes as we make our way along the Milk River towards Malta. There's more trees, but the ground is still really brown and dry this time of year. Roads of the past and future clash, a stark reminder of where we came from and where we're going. The soft paths of the wagon wheels left behind, the wagons crossing the hard and lined highways that lead to town and comfort, are a reminder that the harsh reality of living in a wagon is only for the weekend. The last day brought us cool weather and the promise of a much needed rainstorm to quench the terribly dry land. The last day also had fatigued and tired horses. This young team had pulled a heavy load all week and this last hill, the largest hill of them all, got the best of them. The older horse on the left was the only reason we made it to the top. The younger three-year-old had pulled to the point of muscle failure and almost collapsed before the top. We pulled over to the side and let them breathe and regain their strength before pulling into night camp. And now we say goodbye to the barren hills and the noise of the wagons and the chains. And we say thank you. Good job, boys. Thank you for getting us home.